Hello. <laughs> no, it doesn't sound like I'm the one, the only. So, yay. <laughs> okay. Um, before I begin, if anybody here thinks they can be very easily offended, I'll give you five seconds to step away. <laughs> And for the rest of you, you know, these are just some innocent remarks made by poor foreigners because, well, English language is quite elaborate and confusing. Um, many of you have asked me to do more funny shows, and the interesting thing is sometimes I don't know that what I said is funny because I've lived here for 20 years, but I still catch myself thinking in Russian sometimes. But that's not the case for my son, who understands Russian perfectly, but thinks and speaks in English, well, much like you guys, you know. So every once in a while, I'll say something perfectly normal, just Russian words, and it just causes him to giggle because, well, for instance, if I'm in the kitchen and I'm telling him about apron, and the Russian word for apron is fartuch, and he just, you know, kind of... Um, and then one time he asked me what I'll be doing, and I had to do some alteration on clothes or something, and I said that I will be sewing, and my Russian friends know this is how it sounds in Russian, Ya budu shit. And he just went, <laughs> you know. And, um, but on the more extreme side, you know, he's one of those kids, and I'm sure you've never met them, who like to argue with parents, and... Um, he always likes to prove that his point is right. So, and one time I just wanted to say, you know what, we're not going to argue about this because it's just a fact. So I said it in Russian, and I said, this is a fact. I said, это факт. <laughs> and he gave me that look. Mom. And I, and I didn't even catch right away what, what was happening. And then finally... And I'm like, oh, come on, Benja, that's just your normal Russian word. But anyway, so um, sometimes, you know, we call little children who are really sweet and nice, the Russian word for them is poopsik. And um, <laughs> no, I don't know, Benja didn't want me to call him that way. So, um, But I have to tell you that the hardest thing for foreigners is pronunciation, right? So um, I think we get better at it with time, but the first years are terrible. My aunt, uh, she said she used to work for the company and they were doing presentation for a client. And uh, she had to tell them to pay attention, to focus their attention on the overhead. And she got reprimanded by her boss because she said, and now let's focus on the overhead. <laughs> and um, one of the really tricky things is pronouncing the E sound and the E sound. I mean, honestly, I used to have trouble with that also. Like, in some cases, it can be actually very important because, like, say, lay on the beach, well, you don't really want to pronounce the is sound in the beach because, well, it's a whole different meaning. So, uh, this lady, this is kind of a bad one. <laughs> anyway, she was sitting at the Texas Employment Commission and she, she needed to write something down. She didn't have any paper. And there was a man sitting next to her uh, with a piece of paper, so she just wanted to ask him for a piece of paper. And uh, she was very polite. Um, <laughs> she asked him, excuse me, um, can I have a piece of your shit, please? Um, uh, well, I'll tell you what really, really drives me crazy. I mean, a little bit less now than it used to, but it's abbreviations. Abbreviations are very tricky. For some reason, I used to think that UPS meant United Partial Service. And um, uh, there was also a guy who shared a story with me. He was, um, you know, he was from Ukraine, and he was at UT Dallas trying to get his doctor's degree. But meanwhile, he was teaching bachelor students math. And so one time in class, he had to write the word assumption on the board, but it's kind of a long word, so he just abbreviated and wrote the first three letters. And <laughs> as, as he was sitting, you know, as he was writing on the board, he kind of heard the class kind of giggling and everything. He turned around like, what, you know, what's going on? And everyone was just staring at the first three letters of assumption. And um, 
Now, the hardest thing for me, even today, is Facebook. I mean, this is not even English, I don't know how to... It's like your internet texting kind of slang, right? Which I had to learn <laughs> just recently. And um, my favorite joke about Facebook is um, there's this teenager and he posted something on Facebook and then his dad just joined Facebook and commented on his post. And he's saying, my dad is on Facebook, WTF. <laughs> and his dad is writing, hey son, what's WTF? Um, he's like, oh yeah, dad, WTF. Um, oh, welcome to Facebook. <laughs> And um, people always share things with me, and it's really embarrassing, but they're just fun stories. I mean, uh, there used to be a um, hairstyle common for women. Um, they called it blow dry. And um, one woman told me when she was 15, and she had to do this um, blow dry style, she came into the shop, and she said, um, I'm here to get a blow job done. Now, this is my, my husband's, one of his favorite stories. It happened a long time ago. We were driving in California, and the street sign said, do not pick up aliens. And I said, who do they think they're kidding? I mean, when was the last time aliens came down to Earth? <laughs> and, uh, you know, guys, I really like to make you compliments, and I usually mean them sincerely. But if you don't like my compliment, you know, that's not really my fault because I mean well. Um, I used to work for a very serious, respectful kind of broker. And uh, he often had expression, sounds like a winner to me. And so one time he was by the copy machine and he was kind of just thinking to himself like, winner, winner, and then he changed the word and he said, winner, winner. And um, he kind of suspected, he said, hey, Helen, do you know what Wiener means? I didn't. Um, I only knew Wiener. So when he said, do you know what Wiener means? And I said, sure I know, it's you. <laughs> he asked for it. Anyway, um, well, I learned that there's multiple meanings to that word, but anyway. <laughs> and I wanted uh, to share a joke with you guys. Um, it's actually a joke from Ireland. Now, if anyone here is Irish, my Irish accent is not so good, but the joke is. Um, so this happens in a kind of very rural village in Ireland where there's pretty much more animals than people. So um, the whole village gets together in the committee and the leader asks everyone, have you ever seen a ghost? People are looking and no one's reacting, but the old man in the very back is kind of like, you know, raising his hand and he says, okay, have you ever touched a ghost? No one's responding and they look around and the, the, man, the old man in the very back is kind of, you know, he says, okay, has anybody here ever made love to a ghost? Aww. Everyone's like, this is crazy, right? So no, no. And then he looks and the old man in the back is like. <laughs> so he walks to the old man. He says, are you telling me that you have seen, touched and made love to a ghost? And the old man says, oh, a ghost? I thought it was a goat. <laughs> so have you guys had enough or do you want one more? 
I don't know. I mean, you all are so pure and innocent. I just... I don't know. I think so. Um, should I? Well, okay. Well, anyway, but I'm going to prove it to you guys that you have a dirty mind. This was a joke posted on Facebook by a guy. Give it to me, she said. I'm so fucking wet, give it to me now. <laughs> well, she could scream all she wants, but I was keeping the umbrella. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>